Good morning, everybody, and welcome to today's edition of Boredom Busters with the Lincoln Children's Museum. Today is Monday, May 11th. For the next couple days, we are going to be body because the month of May is Physical Fitness Month, and tomorrow, May 12th, is International Nurses Day. Now, today, we are going to learn a little bit about bones and tendons and muscles. So for our printable today, here we have kazoo and a skeleton. And the skeleton has all of his fingers out just like us. And they're all numbered, so help kazoo count the skeleton's fingers. And then help kazoo help the skeleton do some addition with those fingers. Now, to learn a little bit about our skeleton, I have a video recommendation today. It is called Your Super Skeleton, and it is all about the bones inside your body. And this book recommendation today will also help you learn a little bit. It is The Skeleton Inside You by Philip Balestrino. This is an excellent book. I remember reading this one and learning all about what your skeleton does for you. So think about your body. Are some parts hard and some parts soft? Now, why do you think that is? Now, when I feel my hands, I can feel both soft parts and hard parts. Now, our hard parts are on the inside of our body and that is our skeleton, our bones. Now, what would your body be like if there were no bones in it? Well, it would just all be squishy, wouldn't it? Because the bones are what give our body its shape and structure. And it's what helps you move around. Because if you didn't have bones, you wouldn't be able to walk. Now, Let's think about our joints a little bit. The joints are places <coughs> where our bones have a bending point. Now, there's more to it than just some bones sitting next to each other. There are things called tendons and ligaments that help those joints bend. And if your leg, if you didn't have a knee, you wouldn't be able to bend your leg and it would be a very silly way to walk, wouldn't it? Try it out. Can you walk without bending any joints? And don't forget, it's not just your knees that are a joint, but also every toe and your ankle is a joint. Your hips are a joint. Can you move at all without moving your joints? Now for a fun song, I have bones, 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 and it is all about bones. It's pretty funny and silly. But I have also the skeleton dance. So this is a video of a song of a dance. So play this video and dance along. See if you can do everything that the skeletons in this song and dance are doing. Now, I would like to also mention that the Lincoln Children's Museum, during the month of May, we are doing something fun called Comanity, like community, May inside of it instead. So if you or your parents or your friends or family ever see us post anything on social media with the hashtag heartfelt rewards, go ahead and comment on that one, retweet it, repost it, and you will be entered to win a prize. And for more information on our community, check out our Facebook or our website. Now, for our activities today, I have two, and the first one, we are going to make a hand, but out of some basic things. Now, this one is a little bit tricky, so you might need a little bit of help on this one with some of the cutting. So let's take a look and see. I've already started some of it because 
it is a longer project. So the first things that you need to do, get together some straws and some string. These are the two main important things, straws and string. Now I'm going to use tape. You could probably use glue, but you would have to wait for it to dry or if you're using hot glue, wait for it to cool down. Now, I'm gonna use craft foam because it's a little bit thicker, it's a little bit sturdier. If you don't have craft foam, use paper because you need something that will bend. Now, I'm using beads to help my strings along. I got a little bit tangled. I'm using beads. You don't have to use beads. You can figure out another way to get them to stay and do what they're supposed to do. Now, I traced my hand on the craft foam with a permanent marker and I cut it out. Now, it is fun to use your own hand and I definitely recommend trying it, but you might find that your fingers are a little bit too small and you'll need to do a grown-up's hand. Now, look at your hand. How many bones do you think are in your hand. Well, remember, on each side of the joint is a different bone. So one, two, three, four. Four for just this finger, and each finger, these ones all have four, but look at your thumb. One, two, three. Now, inside of your hand in this part, there are even more bones. So these ones are called your phalanges and their phalanges whether they're on your feet or your hands back here we have our carpals and our metacarpals now what we're going to do today is we need our tarsals and our carpals and we're going to make them out of straw pieces now, you do need your pieces to be pretty small, especially when you're doing your phalanges. So these ones might even be a little bit too big, because when you get them on here, you want there to be a space in between them. So I'm gonna line those up. And if you get those pieces too close together, it just doesn't work quite as well, but test it out. All right, so I'm gonna tape these on here. And I'm definitely going to need to make this piece of tape a little bit skinnier for that middle straw. So it is such a tiny little bone. And it also, another thing, if you do your own hands or if you've got small hands still, it is just a little trickier to get these on here when they're such small little pieces of straws. Now there are my three phalanges for my index finger, my pointer finger there. And now I need to get a carpal on there. Let's see. I think this piece is just the right length, in fact. All right. So this kind of helps you think about the size of the different bones in your hand. My straw piece here is much bigger because this is a much bigger bone than these little guys. Now these ones are even smaller. Now where do you think the smallest bone in your entire body is? Do you think it's in your legs or your feet? Well, it's actually in your ear. So now what I'm doing, I'm threading this string through. Now this is why I put the bead on, so that it doesn't sneak back through that straw piece. Now, if you need to do a little plastic needle, if you've got a, a, one of those plastic needles for stitching or weaving, or if you have tape, you can put tape on the end too, and that helps. So now getting this all the way through. Let's see. Oh, there it is. So now, once you do this with all of your you can 
bend it. Look at that. And there, it's bending. And the tighter you pull the string, those joints all bend. So you, once you get all your fingers done, you can make a peace sign by pulling down these fingers or bunny ears for a photo. See, see, what, see what you can do with your fingers on here. Now, I'm definitely gonna have to go back and finish this one because it's one of my favorite projects. Now, if you would like, you can connect a chopstick or a bigger straw at the base here so that you can hold your hand up and pull on your fingers there. Now, another way that I've seen it done is to get another little chunk of straw Put the straw piece down here and then thread all of the finger th threads through there then you can make a fist with it now show us how it goes take a picture post it below and if you would like if you like to paint your fingernails i know i do you can paint your fingernails on the back of your hand all right now our second activity today is a little bit silly and fun uh, this one is using q-tips and black paper now there is a printable available for this i kind of like doing it just with the paper and the supplies and doing it myself now I realize that most of our Q-tips here at the museum, you might remember from our face painting station, we like to have them be fun colors for you guys. Well, are our bones fun colors? They really aren't. They are white. Now, I found some. I think that these ones are supposed to be for makeup or something specific because they're not quite the same. A regular Q-tip just has the same little cotton bud down on the end, but this one has got a little pointy one. This end is bumpy, so I'm sure it has a specific purpose. But this was all I could find that had white sticks in them. So you just need a piece of paper. I also like having a crayon on hand. That way I can draw on my black paper and still be able to see it. Now, look at the pictures for some inspiration but inside of our body with all of those bones now i'm going to start by drawing a skull up here let's see so our skull or our cranium is our head and there's inside of our heads actually it's when you're born it's more than one bone but as you grow up those different bone pieces fuse together to make one solid skull. But we have where our eyes go, because our eyes are pretty soft and squishy, actually. So there's pretty big holes in our skull for those squishy eyes. And our nose, now our nose is made out of cartilage. Cartilage is kind of like it's in between with hardness level. It's not, it's not as soft as muscles either. So there's actually a hole where your nose goes. And then we have two bones for our jaw, our upper jaw here. That's where the tops of our teeth are. And that is your maxilla. Then you have your mandible underneath, and it's actually not connected with bones. It is connected with cartilage, and that's where your bottom teeth are. So that's connected up there. All right, now I need to start getting some bones on here. We have ribs, and our ribs are our rib cage here. See if you can feel them. You have several of them, and they protect your lungs and your heart. So I'm gonna use, I'm gonna make some of those. Now I'm gonna see, yes, these Q-tips break because they have a paper stick in them. These ones have the plastic stick in them and they don't break as easily, 
but they still do. So if you have plastic ones, use some scissors. It works a little bit better. So now I'm going to create some ribs here for a skeleton just by breaking these in half. I'm not going to be able to get as many on there as we actually have. And then, right in the middle, these ribs all come together on a bone called your sternum. Let's see if you can feel your sternum there. Now, let's see. I'm going to grab some glue. There we go. And I'm just gonna glue down my ribs and my sternum. So I laid it out, I think I like how that looks. And I'm gonna get some glue out here. There we go. So there's the glue for my sternum. And I'm gonna pull some out for my ribs. Now you can build your entire skeleton using Q-tips like this. Your ribs, your sternum. Now, if you get fancy, you can even put in your clavicle. And your clavicle is your collarbone. Because every single bone in our bodies has its own special name. I remember I had to memorize those when I was in high school in high school health class. So ask the grown-ups, maybe they had to memorize some of those bones too, and maybe they still remember some. So I'm gonna stop here for now, but there are so many fun ways that you can do this project. And it's simple, it's fun. All you need is the glue, the Q-tips, and a piece of paper. Now, Miss Katie. Yes, Miss Greta. What musical instrument is the skeleton's favorite? I don't know, what? The trombone. Thanks everybody for watching today. I hope to see you all tomorrow morning at 10.30 for International Nurses Day. Have a nice day.